The third straight day of air travel chaos. And we've just learned that a Delta flight landed safely without landing gear. Let's bring in transportation reporter Sam Sweeney. Uh, Sam, what do we know so far? Diane, this was a Boeing 717 aircraft. It's an older plane, about 23 years old. It was flying from Atlanta to Charlotte uh, when it declared an emergency. It had two missed approaches. They were running some checklists. They knew there was a problem with the landing gear, uh, according to air traffic control recordings. And then they came in for this landing, and that's where you see that landing gear uh, collapsed. If we can pull the, that video up, uh, you'll see uh, the emergency escape slide came out the front. There was about 96 passengers on board, uh, three flight attendants, two pilots. Uh, everyone was taken to the terminal and the good news right now is that there are no reported injuries the challenge now is that they have to get this plane off that runway uh, after they you know do their preliminary investigation but in the meantime if you are flying into the Charlotte Airport you can expect delays as they are working with a limited amount of runways there so uh, Sam I also want to ask you about these mass delays and cancellations uh, travelers have been stranded across the country for a few days now and the FAA is now admitting that it is understaffed at key facilities, but it's blaming storms in the Northeast for all the mess that's going on. What did you find out? What's really causing this? Well, th there are storms, of course, moving up uh, from as far south as Florida all the way up uh, into the New England corridor, and that's been creating a travel nightmare. But what United Airlines is saying is that the FAA is understaffed. The, and, and the FAA admits that they have staffing issues, but they say um, that they're working the best they can with these storms. And it really is all because of the storms. And the FAA is saying at certain airports, the FAA is cutting too many flights. Uh, an airport can handle only so many flights per hour. So let's use a number 100 flights per hour at Newark Airport. If you limit that to 50 flights an hour because you're trying to space things out uh, during bad weather, well, you are forced to cancel flights because you can only handle so many planes per hour and so many hours in one day. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. And it's just been storm after storm after storm. And it's making it difficult for airlines like United, which has a major hub at Newark, to really recuperate. Some of the regional airlines are also feeling uh, this because they fly so many planes in and out of New York airports like LaGuardia and Newark, and that's where these storms have really been centered. So how do airlines choose which flights to cancel? What goes into that decision? Well, there, there's a whole uh, system that they work with in the operations department. They look at a number of factors. You know, where is the crew coming from? Where is the crew going? Where is the airplane located? So some people may say, look, I'm sitting in New York. It's sunny here. I'm flying to Charlotte. It's sunny there. There's no weather in between. But the plane that they're taking, that plane may be stuck in Chicago or their crew may be stuck in Chicago. Or maybe they're only half booked and the airline says this will allow us to uh, impact the least amount of people if we cancel this particular flight. So there's a whole plethora of things that go into determining which flights get canceled. All right, Sam Sweeney, always great to have you, Sam. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.